Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. We'll have all the details later on in the video. Today, I'm gonna to talk about five different ways to connect to Home Assistant remotely. Some of them are easier and some of them are harder. And I'll tell you which one is my recommended way. So stay tuned. So let's talk about my very first choice when connecting to Home Assistant remotely. And that is gonna be the Home Assistant Nabucasa. So the Home Assistant Cloud. The Home Assistant Cloud is an easy way for you to connect to Home Assistant. It does have a cost associated with it. And now in a lot of countries, you can do a yearly or annual subscription. It's about $6.50 per month or $65 for the annual plan. So what is the Home Assistant Cloud? It allows you access from anywhere. Uh, it's easily or easy to connect to voice assistants. And by the way, I'm not, a, I'm not uh, supported or sponsored by a home assistant, but this is just the best way I've found to connect the most easiest way. It also allows you to fund the development of Home Assistant and ESP Home. You can get text-to-speech with a whole bunch of different dialects. That's really cool. And then it also keeps everything secure. You just log in via Home Assistant and a secure connection with the cloud will be established. No, no need to open ports, no dynamic DS uh, DNS, no SSL certificates, nothing like that. This is the easiest, most secure way to do that with the least amount of work. And then also they keep everything private. You can read all about the privacy and everything on their website. And to install this, and I won't go through installation for everything, but I'm just going to show you how easy this is. If you go into your Home Assistant instance and you go into your settings, you'll find a section called Home Assistant Cloud. And if you have not created a, an account already with them, you just start your free month one, uh, one month trial. Otherwise, you sign in. Uh, with your username and password, and you're now connected. It's that simple. And if you want to connect to uh, your smart speakers, there's a whole section on setting up your devices through the UI. You can expose your entities to the Home Assistant Cloud directly. With this particular type of connection, I would give it a level of effort of one being uh, one, with one being the easiest and 10 being the hardest. So it is by far the easiest and quickest way to get set up. So next up is TailScale. TailScale is a configureless or zero config VPN option. Uh, and I'm gonna go by some of the claims here. I've used it, I've used it successfully as a matter of fact, quite a few times. It installs on any device in minutes, manages firewall rules for you and works from anywhere. I like TailScale for the fact that I can access stuff inside of my network uh, through this zero configuration VPN by installing an add-on in Home Assistant and exposing the network uh, through the TailScale add-on. It's super simple to set up. Again, one of these easy ones to set up. This is a little more advanced in the fact that if you're just doing Home Assistant, the Nabu Casa Cloud is for you. If you need a little more access to things within your network, a little more uh, granularity, some more control over what gets exposed, this is one of the options for you. It is a VPN solution, so you have a secure connection between your device and the endpoint, which happens to be, in this case, your Home Assistant instance. One of the cool things about this as well is that if I'm on my phone or my mobile device or a laptop and I'm connected via TailScale, I can have it use my local DNS, such as my AdGuard or PyHole, and then my ad blocking works just like it would if, as if I were on the local network. Again, this is super easy to install. I've got most of these installed already because I'm, I'm gonna show you a couple things about them. If we go to settings and we click on add-ons, the add-on store here is where you would go to find that stuff. So down here is a little button for the add-on store. You would just click that for anything you wanna add to Home Assistant. And if we look for TailScale, we do have uh, it available in the Home Assistant Community add-on section. Now the Home Assistant Community add-ons is an area where uh, non-core type add-ons are available and they're provided by the community. Now this is not the HACS, the Hacks, which has a whole bunch more different uh, types of add-ons and integrations. This is strictly just the Home Assistant Community add-ons. And if you don't have the Home Assistant Community add-on section in your Home Assistant setup, you'll have to copy this repository and you'll go over here to your add-on store, click these things, add um, the link there. And then when you click on add, it'll add anything that's available in the add-ons to Home Assistant for you to use and TailScale being one of them. Now, when I look at TailScale, I just wanna show you a couple things here. 
One is the configuration. When we talk about zero configuration for a VPN, this is it. There's nothing to configure. You install it and you start it up and then it creates a connection from your home assistant to the tail scale infrastructure. And then again, no ports are needed to be opened in your firewall. All of that is done behind the scenes. When you connect to tail scale, the connection is made without you having to do anything at all. So just a, a quick note about all this. I'm not gonna go into specific settings and setups for all of this. I do have videos on a lot of these things I've already gone through. I just wanna go through a quick rundown of different options for you, depending on your use case. And I also say, cause I'm gonna get probably comments about this. Not everything works for everybody. So you'll have to choose the option that is best for you. I'm talking a lot about different types of connections in this video, VPNs, non-VPNs, direct connections, SSL domains, all that kind of stuff. It might be a little bit overwhelming to you, or you might want to know a little bit more about those technologies. Well, I've got the perfect place for that. And that's today's video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes that you can take. If we just look at Skillshare's browse, we can see all of the different types of courses they have from animation, creative writing, film and video, fine arts, graphic design, all of these different ones. If there's a specific skill you're looking for that's not related to the technology I'm talking about today in my video, you can still find that on Skillshare. There are learning paths that take you through all kinds of different learning from getting started with digital illustration, animation, uh, creative businessing, watercolors, drawing, photoshops, and there are dozens and dozens and dozens of technology type courses available at Skillshare. Now I'm currently taking a course to help build my skills on this same type of technology that I'm talking about today. It's called the Absolute Beginner's Guide to Information Security by Alexander Oni, and he has a number of different security and web building type courses. This course covers the full range of everything you want to know about related to networking, privacy and anonymity, malware, email security, backups and encryption, Windows 10 hardening, and a whole bunch of other things. You can discover all of the Skillshare classes for free. The first 1,000 people to click in the link down in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So take a moment, pause my video if you want to, jump on over to Skillshare with that link and become a member and start learning all the stuff you want to learn. All right, so let's talk about my third option here, which is called WireGuard. WireGuard is a super fast, modern um, VPN tunnel setup. And it is super fast. And I guarantee you, when you sign into it, you're on it within seconds. So it's really awesome there. Its claim is it aims to be faster, simpler, leaner, and more useful than things like IPsec while avoiding the huge headache. It's more performant than OpenVPN. There's, and these are claims that they've made. I, I haven't validated these against each other, but I do know it's super fast. It's designed as a general purpose VPN running on embedded interfaces, yada, yada. You can read all about this on the WireGuard website. From a home assistant perspective, if we go back over to our add-ons and we look at our add-on WireGuard add-on, again, it's in the home assistant community add-ons section. You need to make sure that if you've installed that if you wanna install this add-on. But if we look at here, um, some configuration options here, you do have some more things that you need to add here. You do need to understand the configuration and there's, there's walkthroughs. I've got a video on it. I'll link all these videos down below where I talk about how I've set these things up. I've run through and run all of these that I talk about today. So you'll have a video on all of them. But you have peers that you set up and you have a server that you set up. And then you have a port that you have to be able to expose in your firewall. So all, automatically, we now have a new level of complexity. We have to mess with our firewall in order to allow the wire guard traffic in. But I will say, if this is the route you choose to use, it just works, just like the rest of them. There is a lot of documentation. It tells you how to set all this up. And again, port forward this port, UDP in your router, to your home assistant instance, or it's not gonna work. And then there is actually a QR code uh, PNG file that you can download using Samba, Visual Studio Code, or something else. And this will allow you to scan that on your phone and automatically set up WireGuard using a QR code. So in terms of setting this up on other devices, it is simple if you get this QR code, but you do have to download it using some sort of uh, device or some sort of uh, other add-on to get to that file. Uh, and then there's a whole bunch of talk about the configuration on here. So with WireGuard, it's very fast. 
Uh, the level of effort here is going to be about, I'm going to give it about a five because you're going to have to, to mess with configuration files on both the Home Assistant side as well as on the phone. And if there's a problem with it when you initially set it up, you're going to have to do some troubleshooting. So you're going to have to understand what is going on. The other thing you need to make sure you're aware of with WireGuard is that you're going to have to be able to get back to the IP address of your home network or your local network, meaning you're going to have to have some sort of domain or you're going to have to have a static IP that you always use to access your, your home router, which is probably not likely in many home router cases. So you'll have to have a dynamic DNS of some sort set up and running. Okay, so let's talk about option number four, which is Duck DNS. Duck DNS is free dynamic DNS hosting. Duck DNS does a couple things for you. The first thing is it provides the dynamic DNS component that you need to be able to get back to your local network. So for example, if your IP changes every so often, Duck DNS will report the add-on that you put in Home Assistant will report to Duck DNS where your local IP address is. And that way, when you go to the Duck DNS domain that you've chosen, then you will be able to get back to your, your local network. Uh, if we look at our settings, again, I'll go back to the add-ons page here. And we do have Duck DNS installed as a demo. If I click on Duck DNS, there's documentation that talks you through how to set everything up. Uh, you've got to set up some configurations. So again, this is a little more involved. You put any of the Duck DNS subdomains on your account here. One of the things that makes this nice is that you do not have to worry about uh, the DNS part of it. It's all done within Duck DNS natively. You don't have to go out to a registrar and get a DNS or domain name and do all of that. All you have to do is just sign up for Duck DNS and get a domain name. It does require a Duck DNS account, so you have to log in with Duck DNS and get an account support uh, established. It's free, so it's not a big deal. It does require that you have a port forwarded to your H Home Assistant instance on port typically 443 or something else, whatever port you have Duck DNS running on. The other thing to consider with all of these SSL based type installs is that when you turn on SSL on your Home Assistant instance, you're gonna to have to be able to talk to it on SSL, even on your internal network. That if you go to mydomain.duckdns.org on the outside and that forwards to your HA, your Home Assistant, when you go into your local network and you try to get to it by local IP, for example, 172. whatever, um, it's going to give you an SSL certificate error. That's fine. You, you can accept that in most browsers and just override that. But some things that you need to connect to within your IoT network may not work so well on a Home Assistant instance that's got an SSL back in where a certificate doesn't work right or a certificate isn't uh, matched to the domain name. The way I get around that is I go into AdGuard and I redirect all of my incoming or all of my local uh, network connections to Home Assistant to the, the public URL or public domain. And then it rewrites that and puts it over to my Home Assistant instance. I would give this level of effort about a six, five or six, right along there with WireGuard because you've got configurations that you have to mess with. Uh, you've got other things that you need to deal with in terms of troubleshooting if it doesn't go right. So you're going to have to have a little bit of knowledge on how the DNS stuff works and network works, all of the stuff going on within Duck DNS. Again, I've got videos on how I set all this up so you can follow along if you're interested in using any of these methods. All right, so my final method we're gonna talk about today is the Nginx Proxy Manager, or Nginx Reverse Proxy as it used to be known. This allows you to set up a bunch of domains, all point them to the same spot, and then have the proxy server sorted out for you. So this is just installed through uh, the same community store that we talked about. So if you go into add-ons and you search for the uh, Nginx proxy manager, you'll see it in the Home Assistant community stores uh, add-ons, if I spelled it right. There we go. Nginx proxy manager is under this right here. So we're going to just look at it. Again, this is probably one of the most um, involved in terms of getting it up and running properly. You've got to open a port in a firewall. Typically, again, that's your SSL port, so like port 443. Uh, and then you would go to a domain. You need to run DNS on something somewhere. I use Cloudflare. Uh, I was using Google Domains. I mean, whatever you want to use. I recommend a domain that allows you to automate calls to the DNS server or the DNS setup. So what that means is when you go into um, the web UI for the Nginx proxy manager and you want to provision a domain, I'll just pick one here, test.com. 
whatever. You would go in here to SSL. You would create a, a request a new certificate, use a DNS challenge, choose your prov uh, provider. And then in this case, you would throw in the token in this file here. And then it would go out and automatically provision the SSL certificate for you. You've got a few steps you've got to follow, which makes this one a little more complicated. It's not hard. It's just more steps to follow. You would first go to your DNS provider. You would tell it where your uh, Home Assistant instance is. And then you would open a port in your firewall to point to the Nginx proxy wherever you're storing that or running that in, H in Home Assistant. And in my case, it's um, the .121 IP. I would point all of my requests to that. Then I would set up as many hosts as I have pointing here to the proxy. And then if you have different servers or different devices on your network, you would then point those over to your home assistant uh, or your device where it belongs. So basically everything comes through this Nginx proxy manager and then goes off to different places. In terms of, of my preferences, the very first and easiest way, of course, is the Nabucasa. It does a, a, a number of things. It's easy to set up and it also helps support the development of Home Assistant and all the core services that we get from Home Assistant. Uh, number two is going to be in, in uh, order of effort is going to be tail scale. It allows that zero VPN configuration, just turn it on and go. Uh, then we do uh, WireGuard, which requires configuration on both the, the server side and the device side, but you can use a QR code on the from the device or from the server to scan on the device and get it uh, started up for you easily. Then we have DuckDNS requires you to have a domain name and some other, or doesn't require a domain name, but requires you to do port forwarding in your router uh, and also allows or requires you to do some stuff on your add-on to get it configured and set up. And then the Nginx reverse proxy is the most flexible for what you want to do. It is not a VPN solution. It allows you to connect to services within your network or on Home Assistant using one port for multiple domains. So some of these are VPNs. Some of these are just ways to access Home Assistant directly. So I got a kind of a mixed bag there. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I will help as much as I can. Uh, leave comments down below. And I will link to the videos that I've made on installing all of these types of add-ons so that you, if you want to use one of them, that you can get in there and really dig in and figure out how to do it. I'm on Discord as well. I also have a channel membership. If you want to support the channel, you can join as a member of the channel. And I really appreciate those that already have. And thank you for watching this video. Um, let me know what else you would like to see on the channel. And we will see you on the next video.